Okay, good luck to my opponent. I appreciate the hype. Thank you, Toe Wizzy. Enjoying the stream. Enjoy your resub. So this is rated rapid. Let's play something normal. Hello, Let's play a Eric. Con, how about? I love you content. Thank you less than three. Oh, I love you too, Warlick. Okay, Karokan time. I'll admit I don't know too much Karokan theory, but I know enough to play the first two moves. Oh, D3's been trendy lately. Where white goes for like this weird queenless middle game. I think I'll go for G6. We'll stray away from the main main lines. Just try and get a playable position. Oh, and thanks earlier from uh, Druid IRL. Says, thank you for being such a wonderful person and inspiring my husband and I to learn more about chess. That's very kind. Okay, I think I'll go for Bishop G4. Like the only active logical square for the bishop. I guess Bishop F5 is possible. But usually in the structure, it makes sense to trade and then put all the pawns on light squares. Um, sometimes it even makes sense to play f6. Maybe I'll start with knight h6. Which looks weird. But it's the only way to quickly castle. I do want to open that file. So ideally, the knight wants to find a home on f5. If g4 happens, I might go for this and f7. Ooh, pawn takes. Could also start with c5 here. Or castling. We're calculating c5, queen b3. And queen d7. And choices, choices. Yeah, let's play c5. It's a move I know I want to play. Try and chisel away at white's structure. Hey, what's up, Lexi? Good to see you. I should shout out the fellow streamers in the chat. We have Jay here. We have Lexi Nay. Apologies if I'm missing anyone. Yeah, the ideal setup is to like have all of my things targeting the the white pawn center. Idea to castle, f6 eventually, queen b6 or queen c7. White's probably going to try and like reinforce everything. But already with the double pawns, center opens up that king could be a, uh, a goner. Wasn't sure the right word there. Do I know Yuri Krikun? Yes, strong player and coach. Actually ran into him randomly recently around the St. Louis Chess Club. Hey, it's Derek Wu. Shout out to Derek. How many O's are there? Three O's? Okay, so the benefit of having double C pawns in a position like this is I can take and after takes I can play c5 again. I'd first need to castle and get out of the pin. But there's going to be a lot of pawn break potential. I don't think I'm doing a 24 hour stream. Even though there's maybe some people who want me to. In the near future I'll be doing a 12 hour stream. celebrate half million on youtube but still about like five thousand subs away also okay i have a nice uh tetris piece yeah not quite a pong cube 
There's got to be a name for this Tetris piece, right? It's like the S shape. It's nice thing when whenever a, a Rook Pawn captures towards the center, it becomes twice as powerful. Because pawns on the very edge of the board, they only control one square. But pawns between the B and G file will always control two squares. On top of that, now my rook's sitting on a half open file. Oh, a rhomboid or a pawn parallelogram or a pawn cube sliced and diced. Chad is so creative. Wait, listening to Eric makes my brain feel larger. That sounds like a serious health condition. Someone was asking earlier if you need like a big brain to play chess. Uh oh, my opponent's gone. You do need to be present to play chess. And you need to have a stable internet connection to play chess online. Oh, it's a pawn snake. Yeah, I miss I miss playing Snake on the Nokia brick phones. Okay, so the bishop wants to hurt me. Although this pawn's defending this pawn. Oh, no worries. Let's be sympathetic and give more time. <sighs> oh, I feel like such a nice person now. Kind of want to play c4, make a pawn diamond. There's a rule, it's like a positional rule in chess, where when there's bishops of a certain color, in this case we both have a dark squared bishop, then you usually want your pawns on opposite color of, the, of that, of uh, in this case both bishops. So it'd be nice to get all my pawns on light squares. In doing so, that would fix white's pawns on dark squares. Ooh. Oh, I'm threatening a cool move. White's probably going to stop it, though. Yeah, for a moment there, if it was my move, I would play bishop c1. Diamonds which would be completely are forever. Winning. Diamonds, yeah, okay. Just for that, we have a pawn diamond. But we'll see if it's actually forever. Because white might start chiseling. Thank you, X Tempo X. Who is sad says, Are you based in Chicago? I lived there for 10 years and I thought, thought I saw you the other week. I was in Chicago about a week ago. Uh, so it's possible you could have seen me. I've been getting recognized a decent amount lately in public. Um, a couple of times recently in St. Louis. Okay, F6 maybe. It's time for F6. Because I want to open that file. The threat is now takes, 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 takes to win a pawn. And if takes, takes, I'll double up and F3 is probably going to be hard to defend. Okay, emote only mode. Let's see everyone's emotes. I still need to make like a follower emote. And Twitch has a new feature where if you follow a channel, a channel can give like every follower one free emote. Wow. So this pawn is going in deep. I have this move, preparing this and this. If white does this and this, I'll do this, this, and this. Okay, so I'm winning a pawn. Diamond is still lasting. It might be hard to prove that this diamond will be forever, though. Much easier to counterprove. Counterprove, disprove. Okay, Bishop is fully dominating the knight. White's position is kind of sad. If 
h5, I play g5. Might as well move my king. White might be on Zugzwang eventually. Also just realized I have all eight pawns. Which means I can make eight bishops or knights. So many possibilities. Okay, so the rook wants to, to go in deep. If this rook wants to join. If a4, I'd probably just move back. Oh, a4 is probably coming. About to do this. Let's start with this. I have to discourage a4. King f6. And then I'll put the rook here to defend. I'm threatening to take on f3. Ooh, so if rook f1, I guess there's also rook e3. White has a few moves. If rook f1, I could consider playing c5. Okay, now I kind of want to take and play e5. I assume the ending is winning. Okay. It's an interesting shape. It's like um, what you use to blow bubbles. Like the bubble stick. Or it's like a key, yeah. E to victory. I really want to take this pawn. It's not a good move, though. Oh, it's a pawn spoon. <laughs> Don't mess with my pawn spoon. The best eating utensil for pawn soup. I should probably play this move. Yeah, like this is the only... I, I can also consider taking, but... I'll play this. Or the pawn spork. I don't know what shape this is anymore. It's like a... It's like a snake with a very large head. I'll play this move first. Now I'm threatening to take and crash through. And if white takes, I take with rook and this pawn's a goner. I feel like I'm getting karma for being nice to my opponent earlier. Also feel like I shouldn't have given them more time. Because white would already be less than 30 seconds. Okay. Try and win this based on the position. Start with this. Invade with the rook. So the point of this move is to meet rook f2 with e3. Also might just want to play this next. Um, might as well put my king in h6. It's a very, very pleasant position. I have a lot of time here to do what I want. Oh, let's win the pawn. Offer the rook trade.
No mercy now. Am I an onion fan? Onions sometimes make me cry. But I probably prefer onions cooked. Yeah, my diamond is still lasting forever and ever.